we got the Quran. You know how we got that. How, how the, 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 the Quran, I have one around here somewhere. Anyhow, um, how do we get it in the written form that it is? That's a trick question? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not a trick question. No. Well, the prophet would deliver the Quran orally, and then I guess there were people who would write. Right. He, he would, the, the revelation, that's right. All right, you see, here's, here's what's important about the Quran. The Quran is the revelation of Allah. That's what the Quran is. It is the revelation of Allah. And Muhammad gave it, and very early on, it got written down very early, okay? The Bible never has claimed to be the revelation of God. What the Bible is, Old and the New Testament, it is the record of people of God who were inspired by God, but, but the Bible is not the revelation of God like the Quran is, okay? Now, um, so the Old Testament that we have, um, let me tell you that the, the oldest Hebrew text of the Old Testament is something called the Masoretic text, okay? It is only, it only goes back to the year 1100 AD. You see that? 1100 AD. That means not even a thousand years ago. What that wow. means is the Quran got put in written form before even the Bible got put in the Old Testament, okay, 1100 AD. Um, if, you, if you read the Hebrew, there are a lot of redactions. There are a lot of anachronisms. Do you know what I mean by an anachronism? It, it, it means something is in the text that shouldn't be there. It'd be like, Ali, let's say you and I said, all right, Let's fake everybody out. Let's tell everybody we found a long lost play written by Shakespeare. Let's, let's do that. So you and I kind of write a play in, in 16th century Elizabethan language, you know, the Duffs and all that thing. But then we make a mistake. We say, ah, quick, hide me away to my Apple computer. Well, you would know that Shakespeare would have mentioned an Apple computer. That's called an anachronism. It's something that's there that shouldn't be there. The Old and the New Testament are full of those. They're full of things where somebody inserted something in to make the text, the biblical text, conform to something the church taught. The famous one was in the Old Testament after the um, flood of Noah. And this is not early. This, this, this only, it, it, it says, Noah says about Ham, who was, who. who in, in the, um, in the Old Testament, Ham was the son, per, son who was father of all Africans. And it says in there, a slave of slaves shall you be to all of your brothers. That wasn't in there in the early days. That is an anachronism. The, 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 the text is all wrong. The grammar is all later wrong. on. Right. And the New Testament is full of those too. And we're going to look at those. The Quran is not. I mean, you know, when you read the Bible, there's a, a, a logical flow. That's revision. Whereas the Quran is kind of like reading Nietzsche. You, you can see, I mean, I don't know if you've ever read Nietzsche, but Nietzsche was a brilliant person. Sometimes he would go bunch of like writing that he'd write four sentences, just brilliant. That's how the Quran is. I mean, when you really, really look at it, you, you can see that it is the revelation, the word of God. So we're going to look at all of those. But, but Ali, let me just tell you, too, that in that New Testament, there is no Trinity. There is no God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. There is no incarnation. What that was, that was the philosophy of Neoplatonism that many early Muslim scholars like Al-Kindi, Ibn Arabi did it, um, Ibn Rushd was a Neoplatonic. It was, it was using Greek terms to describe Islamic truths. And Christians did it too. But what happened with the Christians is they let that 
philosophical language get and become sacred articles of faith. That's mm -hmm. what they did to make a point. Um, uh, and, and 